The people of Puerto Rico are among the filthiest, laziest, most degraded and thieving of all races. They are of lower rank than the Italians. What the island needs is not public health work, but something like a tidal wave to completely wipe out the population. I've done my best to promote their extermination by killing eight of them and planting cancer in many of them. All doctors enjoy mistreating and torturing these unfortunate people. These were the words of a doctor involved in one of the dirtiest human experiments in modern history which the people of Guatemala have not been able to forget to this day. Most medical and biological experiments are conducted on animals and other creatures like insects and plants for a simple reason. Humans are stronger than them and they have a different consciousness than ours. It is unimaginable to conduct experiments on real humans because it would be a disaster that strips us of our humanity. This is what most normal people believe and it's both right and wrong. Throughout distant and recent history, terrifying experiments were conducted where the subjects were not rats or dogs but real humans. In this video I will present to you three of the most horrific scientific experiments on humans throughout history. If you are someone who is afraid or disgusted by these topics I advise you not to watch the video. If you're interested hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Experiment 1, the cancer experiment in Puerto Rico. In the mid-20th century, medical research was expanding significantly with large budgets allocated to it. However, the missing link that turned these researches into horror stories was the lack of strict ethical standards and regulations in the medical field, allowing for research and experiments on humans without legal consequences, much like smoking was once allowed on television, in clubs, on airplanes and in public places and is now completely banned. Due to this negligence in the medical field, the eyes of unethical doctors and researchers turned toward Puerto Rico. Yes, the island that produced the world's most famous song by Views was drowning in poverty, underdevelopment and a weak healthcare infrastructure, turning it into a paradise for their diabolical research. In the 1930s and 1940s, several researchers and private institutions conducted cancer research on patients in Puerto Rico, including testing experimental drugs and radiation treatments. The alarming part is that these scientists and researchers exploited the ignorance and poverty of the people conducting these experiments without the patient's consent, with many not even aware they were part of an experiment. One of the most famous figures in this research was Dr. Cornelius Rhodes, an American pathologist sent by the Rockefeller Institute to Puerto Rico to study anemia. However, his work extended beyond anemia to cancer research. Rhodes was known for his unethical practices and racist attitudes towards other races. Dr. Rhodes wrote a heinous letter on November 10, 1931, saying, The people of Puerto Rico are the filthiest, laziest, most degenerate and thieving race of men ever inhabiting this sphere. They are even lower than the Italians. What the island needs is not public health work, but a tidal wave or something to totally exterminate the population. I have done my best to further the process of their extermination by killing off eight and transplanting cancer into several more. All physicians take delight in the abuse and torture of the unfortunate subjects. This letter was later revealed and caused a public outcry in the scientific community and among the general public, especially in Puerto Rico. The Puerto Rican government launched an investigation into the matter, but Rhodes fled the island before any legal action could be taken. Despite the heavy scandal, the shocking part is that Rhodes, who uttered these venomous and hateful racist words and confessed to deadly human experiments, did not suffer any consequences. He continued his work normally and even held high positions in medical research. The same man who said all those racist words was awarded the Medal of Merit in 1945. In 1979, the American Association for Cancer Research established the Cornelius P. Rhodes Memorial Award, an award for outstanding achievements in cancer research. For years, and due to the illogical and unethical nature of this matter, the American Association for Cancer Research received complaints regarding the racist letter Rhodes wrote about the people of Puerto Rico and the naming of the award after him. The association ignored these complaints for decades until it finally decided to face reality and fearing a scandal in front of the world, 
removed Cornelius P. Rhodes' name from the award in 2003. This scandal left a deep scar in the Puerto Rican community, destroying their trust in medical and research institutions in general. Imagine being sick and fearing not the disease itself, but the hospital where you will go for treatment. Patients in Puerto Rico felt betrayed by the people who were supposed to care for them. The Puerto Rico experiment scandal, along with several other unethical experiments, was the reason for developing stricter ethical guidelines in medical research, leading to the establishment of the Nuremberg Code. This code was created after World War II, followed by the Belmont Report, which became the foundation of modern research ethics. Guatemala experiment. In 2010, a scandal erupted in the United States, causing controversy and upheaval in the scientific and medical communities, all due to the Guatemala experiment. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted infection caused by the bacterium Treponema pallidum, the same disease that took down one of the most famous philosophers of the modern era, Friedrich Nietzsche, as it progressed to his brain. Between 1946 and 1948, one of the most sinister human experiments took place. The subject of this experiment was syphilis, and it was conducted in Guatemala. The primary goal of this experiment was to investigate the effectiveness of penicillin in treating syphilis and other sexually transmitted diseases, as well as the natural progression of these diseases. The study was led by Dr. John Charles Cutler, a physician with the US Public Health Service. The scandal revealed that not only was the United States involved, but also the Guatemalan authorities likely unknowingly and unintentionally participated in this horrific experiment on its citizens, granting the green light without understanding the nature of the experiment or the extent of harm it could cause to the people. Researchers deliberately and without consent infected a total of 1,308 Guatemalan citizens, including men and women, soldiers, prisoners, sex workers and psychiatric patients with syphilis and other sexually transmitted diseases like gonorrhea and chancroid on their genitalia, arms and faces. Some patients were treated with penicillin as part of the study to observe their reaction to the drug. However, the most diabolical aspect of the experiment was that these researchers left about 30% of the patients they had infected untreated to observe the disease's progression on their bodies, leading to immense suffering and lifelong health disasters, with some even dying from the symptoms. Most of this experiment remained secret and shrouded in mystery until 2010, when historian Susan Reverby stumbled upon strange and secret records while researching the Tuskegee syphilis study. As she turned the pages of those records, she was shocked by what she found. Susan couldn't believe she had a complete file containing historical records of one of the most horrific human experiments in her hands. After publishing the documents, an outcry erupted in America, followed by fiery media coverage. Amid the scandalous and unethical uproar, the United States issued an apology for the Guatemala experiment in the same year, 2010, with then-President Barack Obama stating that he was shocked by the study and personally apologized to Guatemalan President Alvaro Colón. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Secretary of Health and Human Services Kathleen Sebelius said, Although these events occurred more than 64 years ago, we are outraged by the reprehensible actions taken by many researchers during that period. Class action lawsuits were filed on behalf of the victims and their families. In 2012, the court ruled that the government of the United States could not be sued for compensation. However, at the same time, around 750 victims and their families received financial compensation from a special fund set up by the Guatemalan government. While this was not enough to heal the wounds or restore the rights of those who were brutally exploited, it was a step toward acknowledging the mistakes made by both governments. The Tuskegee Experiment One of the most famous unethical scientific experiments conducted on humans, the Tuskegee Experiment focused on syphilis and its treatment. It began in 1932 and lasted for about 40 years. The experiment involved around 600 black men from Macon County, Alabama, who were carefully selected because they were poor and illiterate, leading the researchers to believe they would not be able to complain or object. 
These men were told they would receive free health care from the US government, which was a lie, as there were no plans to provide actual treatment to the patients. Instead, they were given placebos and ineffective treatments. The experiment aimed to study the natural progression of syphilis if left untreated. Even after researchers discovered that penicillin was an effective treatment for syphilis in the 1940s, the treatment was not offered to the participants. As a result, many suffered severe health complications and some died. In 1972, details of the experiment were leaked to the public by a whistleblower within the US Public Health Service, causing widespread outrage. The scandal led to the experiment's termination and triggered an extensive investigation, followed by significant reforms in US medical research laws. In 1997, President Bill Clinton formally apologized to the victims of the Tuskegee experiment, saying, what the United States government did was shameful, and I am sorry. The victims and their families were financially compensated and provided with lifetime health care. These three experiments served as a wake-up call to the world about the importance of strict ethics in medical research. While these experiments were disastrous and caused untold harm, they also spurred the development of laws and systems to protect the rights of participants in medical studies and research.